This is an update on the project to put a basement under Lee and Connie's ranch house in Green Bay. Almost all the material from our project is going to go up that little plywood path you see on your left. We're going to take a, a steep ravine there and make it into a shallow ravine with a downhill curving path to get to the backyard. We might take some of the fill and put a little hill in our backyard, we're not sure yet. About 30 dump truck loads of material that we're moving. We're taking a quick walk down the hall road. I'll show you what's going on down here. A little plywood path going into the woods. This was a steep ravine full of brush and stuff. It looks a little rough now, but what's going to happen is this is going to get grayed into a, like a shallow ravine with a curve and a, a flat path on the bottom of leading down to the lawn that's in a distance there. We had a microburst here about uh, four weeks ago and split this big oak tree right up the middle right next to the path and that fell backwards and uh, did enough damage to kill with two more big oak trees behind it. This is a shot of our backyard considering putting a little hill in the distant end of that picture behind that uh, oak tree. To recap our process for what we're doing, we're bringing the material out of the basement up a series of conveyors into a buggy or later it'd be a dump trailer in the garage. We dug a mine shaft in the back garage stall. You can see the outfeed conveyor. And a flight conveyor which feeds from there and I dump into the hopper on the bottom. Stairs going down. There's a new basement post in a pile down there. When we're done, this area here is where the new uh, staircase is going to be going up to the house. Kind of interesting about basement posts, almost everyone you see anywhere is in upside down. They're designed to put, be put in with those screws you see to your left on the bottom of the post. So a concrete uh, floor holds them in position and takes the weight off the screws. Everybody puts them in with that screw to the top, then the whole way of the house is on the screw threads. I'm at the bottom of the stairs here. You can see the old uh, crawl space floor, about 42 inches of clearance. And as I dig, you can see, I think you can see that it's slanting downhill. I'll keep uh, going at a grade down to the sump pit. And if I ever had a water problem, then the only place will be back by the sump pit and the whole thing will turn into a swamp. I haul in this power buggy, dump into the pump, the uh, hopper you see there. I think I said I'm about 40 feet into the house now. I got to uh, move the power cart into the hole finally so we didn't have to walk around it. And it's a good time to explain the purpose of that. You see the big motor there? Almost all households have what's called single phase uh, current. Like your washer, dryer, toaster, everything's on that. In industrial motors you use a different kind of current called three phase which makes the motor run cheaper and smoother. The motor you see converts from the household current to three phase, which is what the excavator requires. Because it's not electricity, there's not much noise and no fumes. I'm recycling uh, whatever gravel I can easily get that's going to get used again in a new base at the new, ex new uh, elevation and also for uh, concrete and the footings. The first new basement post is in. There's a new footing about two feet down from where it's buried there. And then the shore's in to do the next basement post. I kind of double up on the shores or on the sand just in case the way the house would uh, push the shore into the sand. We had a seam of uh, really clean mason sand in there. 
What's interesting, it's not really a level layer. You can see where clay is marbled into it. That chunk of clay there goes down six feet. You'll see in the center of the screen the old plumbing wasteland that used to run th right through the excavation. And since we talked last, all the uh, plumbing wastelines have been hung on the wall. Unless they had anything really exciting, like dinosaur bones or something, this whole thing should be clear to dig. I came across my first rock. This is too big to haul out of here, so what I'm going to do is uh, dig a hole and bury it under the floor and not tell anybody about it. When we're done, there'll be two bedroom windows on a distant wall that you see about the line with the fan and the excavator. The grade falls five feet there. So the basement would be eight feet deep, seven feet under the beam. And uh, the last step will be uh, there's no bottom to those uh, window, one of those windows initially, and all the equipment will go out that hole. Then the hole will get blocked up. The power cart, the excavator, and eventually the uh, concrete mixer will be down here too. Your reference to a yard of material, a yard is uh, a cubic yard, three feet by three feet by three feet. A moderate side dump truck will haul 12 yards. We had 310 yards to dig out of this hole, and I've got a 75 yard dugout so far. My plan is to dig out most of the center non load bearing stuff before winter hits. And then, if winter does hit, then I can keep working in here and start underpinning six feet at a time and keep working.